particular forms of exercise and how they modulate the steroid hormones. You start digging into the more mechanistic studies. What you find is that heavy weight trainings, but not weight training to failure, where completion of a repetition is impossible, leads to the greatest increases in testosterone. So anywhere from one rep maximum to somewhere in the you know six to eight rep repetition range in males or females increases testosterone significantly. And it does it for about a day, sometimes up to 48 hours. Now, many of you might be endurance athletes or also enjoy exercise besides heavy weight bearing exercise. And there are several studies exploring whether or not endurance activity can increase or decrease androgen levels and whether or not you combine endurance activity and weight training, whether or not that has any effect if you do the endurance activity first or second. And the takeaway from all of this was that endurance activity, if performed first, leads to decreases in testosterone during the weight training session as compared to the same weight training session done first followed by endurance activity. In other words, if you want to optimize testosterone levels, it seems to be the case that weight training first and doing cardio type endurance activity afterward is the right order of business. Now, when these are done on separate days, it doesn't seem to have an effect. There is, they showed no statistical interaction, but it seems that if you're going to do these in the same workout episode, that it's move heavy loads first, then do cardiovascular exercise. So there's a little bit of data looking specifically at how endurance exercise impacts testosterone and its derivatives. And it's very clear that high intensity interval training, sprinting, etc., which somewhat mimics the neural activity that occurs while moving heavy weight loads is going to increase testosterone. There's ample evidence for that in the, in the literature. And that endurance exercise that extends beyond 75 minutes is going to start to lead to reductions in testosterone, presumably by increases in cortisol. 